three, a DOE technical review team said, there's problems with benzene. You need to better understand the chemistry. So you're saying inside the energy department this was laid out? Inside the energy department, they knew that this was a problem. Okay, and they still went forward is what you're saying? They still went forward. And at the end of the project, they say there's a problem with benzene? They turned it on, they started operating, and they had so much benzene, it was a safety concern, and they basically had to shut it down. This was a setback. This was a disappointment. Greg Rudy is the energy department's like top TV. cleanup yeah. official at the Savannah River site. 13 years, half a billion dollars, doesn't work. Doesn't work. What happened? The chemistry didn't work, and it couldn't be overcome by engineering, is the short answer. Wasn't Savannah River warned that benzene was going to be a byproduct if they went ahead with that facility? Why'd they go forward? Because there were differing professional opinions on how much benzene and whether or not the system was going to be able to handle the benzene. Instead of heeding the warnings, not just from GAO, but from the Energy Department's own engineers, Savannah spent $93 million on this incinerator in an attempt to engineer around the benzene problem. As it got into the early 90s, then perhaps a, a closer look should have been taken. The failure to take a closer look will cost taxpayers a billion dollars to remedy. And if there is a lesson to be learned here, what is the lesson? Do not fast-track projects. In fast-track projects, they begin building the facility before they even know if the technology works. Sound like a bad idea? Gary Jones thinks so. She blames the whole benzene fiasco on fast-track. When you're talking about these very complex, one-of-a-kind nuclear facilities, um, it's very, very risky to design the facility, develop the technology, and construct it all at the same time. But fast track has been a fairly routine practice at the Energy Department. It was employed at this project in Idaho called Pit 9, where tons of radioactive garbage were dumped over a 50-year period right into the ground near the Snake River. Lockheed Martin was hired to clean up the mess. But using the fast track approach, they constructed this building before the design and testing of a critical piece of equipment was complete. So they, in other words, they started to build the plant before they'd finished doing the test. Doing the test and doing the design, that's correct. They made some changes along the way to the design. Once they completed the design, what they found was they had made so many changes that that particular piece would not fit into the facility as it was built. Wait a minute. You're saying they went ahead and built the building. And then when they were finished making all the changes, the equipment wouldn't fit in the building? The equipment for this particular process would not fit into the building, as designed. It can't be true. It can't be true. It's true. It's true. If this were to happen in the private sector, people would be fired. Bob Alvarez, the former Energy Department official, says fast track is an unacceptable risk. A company that would take a risk like this would go bankrupt. But the, now we're looking at taxpayer dollars. We're looking at a system that's used to getting a blank check. We're looking at a system that has not been held accountable, that is dominated by contractors who police themselves. And nothing's changed. We know every bit of what you just said eight years ago. Every single part of that. That's correct. And nothing's changed. No, well, actually what has changed is that I think, in my, my opinion, the situation has gotten worse. The Pit 9 mistake could cost taxpayers as much as a quarter billion dollars. Lesson learned? Well, look at the Glass Logs project at Hanford. Harry Boston says they're not doing fast track exactly. Uh, what we are doing is what we call just-in-time engineering. But the GAO and even the contractor Bechtel tell us that just-in-time is just another name for fast track. They're scheduled to begin construction later this year, even though only part of the design will be finished. You can start building the external structure before you've completed the design of every internal component. And if you just think about the way you build a house, you start building the frame of the house before you've selected your bathroom fixtures. You know how many rooms you have, you know where the bathrooms are, and given that foundation, you can move forward successfully, and that's what we're going to do. But do you know what happened at Pit 9? Not in detail. Well, what and happened in Pit 9 is that they did what you just said. They started to build the building, as they were finishing the testing on component parts. Well, what I will assure you 
is the firms we have here are using proven commercial practices that they've used around the world over and over again, and we have every confidence this is going to work. Fast track does happen out in the real world. It could happen for a, a gas station or yeah. a bank building, something that's kind of a cookie cutter approach. But when you're talking about, you know, one of a kind nuclear facility, we've been told is 90% of, of detailed design before you would start construction. But at Hanford, only about 30% of the detailed design will be in hand when construction of the glass logs plant begins. But, you know, the GAO, the investigative arm of Congress, has said for years that this fast track has failed time and again, and it's inappropriate for these kinds of systems. Why didn't you stop it? Um, I'm, I wish I could. I mean, I wish I was all powerful. Once these big projects start to get a lot of money poured into them, it's very hard to stop or slow these projects down. And the Department of Energy, the federal managers, don't have the technical skills to really oversee these very complicated projects and therefore have to uh, basically engage in blind trust of the contractors. And that's what's happened. That's exactly what's happened. In all fairness, the Energy Department has made some progress, such as removing contaminated soil along the Columbia River and successfully extracting radioactive waste from two underground tanks at the Savannah River site. But as Bob Alvarez points out, after they've spent billions and billions of dollars, they've cleaned up only two to three percent of the 90 million gallons. This is an agency that really needs to have some sort of structural management overhaul. We cannot afford to continue to do business as usual with this agency. I think the Department of Energy has reached a state where it's totally impervious to embarrassment. President Bush just gave his energy secretary a new assignment. Transport by road and rail some 70,000 tons of military and commercial nuclear waste and store it under Yucca Mountain in Nevada located a mere 90 miles outside of Las Vegas. The department assured the president the waste can be stored safely for 10,000 years.